Laker GM. He's Mitch Kupchak back on the show. How are you this morning, Mitch? Good morning, Dan. Uh, two months since you've had a head coach. What uh, What is the time frame for uh, hiring a coach? Um, has it been two months already? Yeah, I think uh, two months today. Okay. <laughs> um, well, well, obviously, you know, we're you know looking to, you know, get our head coach in a short period of time. Um, I don't think, you know, we'll have a head coach in the next couple of days, but certainly I think we'll, you know, get somebody in the next week or two and, um, you know, working on the draft. And, um, of course, tonight starts free agency. And, um, and we're working towards it, and we'll have somebody soon. What is the criteria, though, that uh, bringing a coach in? Well, Dan, we've interviewed a bunch of uh, candidates, and they're all good. You know, some guys with little or no experience at the position and several very experienced coaches. And I would say right now we're leaning towards um, an experienced coach, somebody who's been a head coach in the NBA before. And um, I think that's the way we'll probably end up going. Byron Scott? Byron Scott has been interviewed several times, and uh, I think he's a great candidate, uh, certainly in the mix. Cap room-wise, uh, how much room do you have to play with? Well, it's never, never as simple as uh, just blurting out a number. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are all kinds of different things you can do today with the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, you have tender offers that are due today. Some can create more cap room. There's this provision called the stretch provision. Uh, basically, you know, putting all that stuff aside, uh, we have, you know, close to 25 to $30 million uh, based on how you look at it, you know, that we can convert into players if we choose to do so. More likely to be with the team next year, Steve Nash or Pau Gasol? I think they both have a, a chance, um, a good chance. You know, clearly Steve Nash is under contract, so he has the best chance of the two. <laughs> um that makes a difference. Powell is a free agent, and, um, you know, I'll place the call as soon as we're allowed to place the call tonight. And, um, you know, Powell has been very, very good to us. He's a great player. He'll be in the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, he's earned the right to be a free agent, so he's going to have, you know, several options out there to pursue himself. I know he likes Los Angeles. I know he regards this franchise in, in great esteem, and uh, we're hopeful you know, that uh, we would be considered and given a chance to bring him back. Julius Randle, um, if, if, now that after the fact with the draft, but uh, who were you targeting with that, uh, that first-round pick? Well, the draft in the top seven went a little bit different um, you know, than we had thought it would go. Uh, it's in terms of the top nine or ten guys, it went exactly like we thought it would go, but not in the exact same order that we thought it would go. And that always happens on a draft day. Sometimes you get it right. You know, you know who one, two, three, four, five, six is. But this year, you know, because of, um, I guess, injuries to two players, um, you know, the one kid that was taken in Philadelphia, and um, you know, he clearly could have gone one or two, but he went three. And then the guy we got, you know, I think, you know, dropped a little bit further than we thought. Um, so, to answer your question, we're very, very pleased, you know, to get a guy like Julius Randle with the seventh pick in the draft. Uh, we think he has a chance to be a heck of a player. He's really a wonderful kid to sit down and talk to, and he's only 19 years old, so there's a lot of room for growth there. He's Mitch Kupchak, Laker GM, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Uh, you do a mock draft, so who did you think you were going to get? Well... At number seven, you know, I guess there's always a chance because of injuries that the other kid would have dropped. Joel Allen um, beat? Yeah, but, you know, there was just so much out there. And I don't think we thought we were going to get him, but we were prepared, you know, if he were there. Okay. And, and that was really a long shot. Um, you know, the other guys that were in that range, um, you know, Doug McDermott, Marcus Smart, um, you know, Dante Exum had not played in a year. And uh, that was a big question mark for a lot of people, a lot of general managers, an incredible talent. But nobody's really seen him play for a year. So was he going to go three or four? Um, you know, or was he going to drop down to us? So it was really hard to say, 
But we felt of the nine or ten guys that could have been there, of course, you know, Wiggins and, uh, you know, Parker were not going to be there, and we really didn't think Embiid would be there either. But once you got past those three guys, you know, any of the next four or five guys, you know, could have been there. And um, I didn't think we'd be looking at Randall, but I'm very pleased we were. How do you know Kobe is healthy? Kobe said he was, but how do you know? Uh, He's been in the gym. Uh, here, you know, my office overlooks the court uh, from the second floor, and he gets in very, very early. And uh, sometimes I see him. Sometimes, you know, he'll meet a trainer, and the trainer will come up and talk to me afterwards and say, "Hey, Kobe was in early this morning." And you know, so I talked to him a little bit. I talked to Kobe, you know, on the phone, and he says he feels great. You know, the times I've watched him work out in the last month, he looks great. He's not doing full court stuff, which you don't do, you know, in June. But in terms of on the court, you know, putting the ball down, making moves, taking shots, he looks great. If you had a game next week, could he play? Yes, I think he could. I don't think there's any doubt. Is he going to help you in recruiting free agents? Well, that's kind of up to him. Um, prior to today, uh, players, they all talk. And uh, I really, quite frankly, don't know you know, who's calling who. Uh, but in 901 tonight, um, with, if I were to ask Kobe, and I will, you know, if I think we're making inroads in a player, and I say, Kobe, listen, you know, you know, what do you think of this guy? And you know, we think he's this and this and this. And uh, can you make a call? Can you help us out? He would be more than willing to do that. He's done that in the past with many, many players. Are you uh, targeting LeBron? Well, we're not allowed to indicate publicly who we are targeting until nine oh one one tonight. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, uh, like I said, we are you have going, a lot of cap room. Are you going big ticket items here? You're going after big ticket items. Can you at least we can address that? Uh, there, there are a couple of free agents um, that I think are difference makers, and if you have the kind of cap room we do, I mean, why wouldn't you go after them? Kobe more likely to uh, weigh in with thoughts on next head coach or next free agent. Probably, you know, the personnel side, you know, players. Um, you know, like I've mentioned a minute ago, I've talked to Kobe, and, you know, we don't talk every day. He doesn't want to talk every day. Um, you know, every couple of weeks, you know, he'll either call and say, hey, you know, what's an update, or I'll touch base with him, whether it's by phone or a text. And, um, you know, how are we doing with the coaching situation? You know, and I'll ask him what he hears. And, you know, so I can't say that he's going to weigh in, you know, more – on one or the other, Uh, but he does trust us, and um, I would say at this point probably more likely he'd weigh in on the player side. How tough has the last year been? Well, I'll tell you this. Okay, it felt like we lost every game, (laughs) and we only got the seventh pick in the draft. Um, I can't imagine what it feels like, you know, to lose more games than we did and and end up with the first or second pick. Um, It was a tough season. Now, you know, without Kobe and all the other assorted injuries, you know, there's really at some point nothing you can do about it. And um, it's not like you can make a trade and turn the thing around. You know, when the best player in the game or one of the best players in the game is, is not playing for you, you know, it's just so much you can do. So um, that part was frustrating, uh, but it did get difficult, you know, for the players, for the coaching staff. You know, they want to win. Um, you know, that's their legacy, you know, uh, their record and how they did that season. So it was a difficult season. You know, once Kobe went down, he came back and, you know, gave us a, a bump. And, you know, shortly thereafter, within two or three weeks, he was gone back in January. So at that point, it became a tough season. What happens at 12.01 Eastern tonight? Well, in our business, the phones are really moving. Um, you know, you make your list. Um you know, we have a lot of cap room, so we have a lot of opportunities to, you know, touch base with, you know, free agents, and and that includes our own players as well. So there'll be a lot, you know, a lot of phone calls going on around, you know, nine oh one mark time, <laughs> and of course on the East Coast, um, it'll be busy. You know, we'll be busy into the night, but that's that's good. We've been looking for this, you know, moment for almost a year now, so we're excited about it. You said it felt like you lost every game. How tough was it to know that you weren't the best team in your own building? Well, we've had some good years, Dan, and um, you, know, you can't win every year. We try to, 
And, you know, like I mentioned, you know, with Kobe going down and the other injuries, it, you know, some things were out of our control. Clippers had a great year. <laughs> they really did. They're fun to watch. I'm happy, you know, for the guys that I know, you know in that organization. Uh, Doc is a great coach, and I'm happy for him. Um, so we try not to worry too much about, you know, the Clippers or other teams in the NBA. Really what we spend our time in on is worrying about ourselves. How do we get better? I know you got a busy night ahead of you. Uh, always great to talk to you, Mitch. Thanks for joining us. All right, Dan. Thank you. All right, Mitch Kupchak, Laker GM.